Hey everyone, I hope you guys are in the building. Um, thank you guys for joining me, my Facebook group, YouTube. Um, thank you guys for coming in. A uh, Diamond and Michael, do y'all want to? Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, uh, for anybody that's turning in, tuning in from the Money Makers, I wanted to say what's up, Money Makers. Thank you guys so much for joining, and everybody that joins every Saturday, pretty much. I want to say thank you for joining in, and I wanted to also ask where you guys are tuning in from. I see that we have East Harlem in the building, so if you guys as yes. you pour in, please let us know where are you guys coming from. Mike, you want to greet your people. You know, just want to say, you know, welcome back, and like glad, they, I'm glad, you know, glad everybody here. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm excited about this. Um, I'm trying not to fan out right now because you know I'm excited, <laughs> I'm excited about this guest we got right now. So you know, <laughs> I just can't wait. <laughs> and we thank you know we thank you guys for joining us. And if you on top of this ground, it's a good day. All I gotta say, it's a good day if you're here. Thank y'all for joining me from Chicago. I see you. California, Philadelphia, uh, Angela, thank you for joining us. Uh, Kevin, all of you guys that come in, I'll be remiss. Uh, I wish, you know, I can just name you all, but charge it to my head and not my heart. Thank you guys for coming in. And we have an awesome guest for tonight. Um, this gentleman has been the author of a collection of books that me and Mike been following for a minute, you know, uh, for a good while. And I'm talking about early or mid 2000s that we came in and he have just his information on credit. You guys, this man is a monster when it comes to credit. If you don't want just the surface level of credit, if you want to get into that matrix of credit, this is the man that you need to follow, hands down. If y'all don't have his books, I suggest tonight you get his books. And if you don't know, then you need to start to learn about credit. And he's going to teach you about the ins and outs if you get his collections. So we want to introduce, for some of y'all, y'all might know him, if not, you need to get to know him tonight. And this is Mr. Corey P. Smith, and we're bringing him to the stage. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Man, I'm doing, I'm doing good, Sherry. I can't complain. I appreciate that introduction. <laughs> but it is no, I, I absolutely true. <laughs> you, um... I don't know if some of the younger guys, a lot of people are getting a lot of their information straight off of social media. And, um, but you can tell a lot of people who have kind of followed your stuff and reinventing it. Like I can tell some of the people and it's so many like copycats now that people are get information from a person who really got information from you. And, I, it, I've been amazed. I ask people, y'all never heard of this joint? And this is, it. those that never heard of you, like in the credit game, they really don't know about credit. That's that's the way I see it. Like, if you really that person about credit, they would know about you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not to just, you know, toot your horn, but I mean, that's how I kind of gauge people, you know, on credit. If they don't know about you, you know, eh. You know, it's a it's a little shaky, but we really thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you you um you had me on. Like I hadn't done one of these in a minute. Like I hadn't done a it's been some years. I did one with a friend of mine maybe three years ago, but it was this conversation about life, marriage, as far as getting on here, like doing a podcast with somebody or whatever you two. I hadn't done it in years. But you are year. on YouTube yourself, and he has his own channel. You guys, Diamond, drop that link for them. If y'all can, go and subscribe and follow 
uh, Mr. Smith, because he really is a wealth full of knowledge. And so I know I reached out to you because I had followed you for so many years, like your books, because it wasn't like really that social media thing. You know, a lot of your stuff was print. And so uh, when I saw that you were dropping another book, I that's when I, I got the alert through Amazon. And that's what made me reach out to you. So I'm very honored. You're almost like Prince now. You know how Prince went away. How <laughs> <laughs> doing it? <laughs> like Prince was a legend, but he went away. You know, Beyonce don't do interviews or whatever. <laughs> you so I was honored when you did accept the in invitation. So I want to really go um, over some of your collection. To really, we have a list, an organized list of questions. And um, Mike, do you have the questions in for you? Because Mike was the one that uh, really created these questions. Now, I'll be honest, my brother Mike, that's why I got him to come on um, really with me. Because I learned a lot from him. So I've been begging him for years. He's been the one that really, like, point me in the direction of credit while I was investing. And he was always a follower of your information. And that's how I encountered you so many years ago. So, um, Mike, do you want to uh, take up and ask the first question? I mean, sure. Um, what inspired you to, to, to first start teaching about credit? I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> I was broke, and uh, you know, at the time I was young. My wife was younger, and uh, I, <clears throat> we had a we had a baby girl, and uh, we were actually staying in an, in an apartment. And at the time, you know, I thought that I wanted to be a, a, a school teacher, so I was teaching at this a local high school in Memphis, East High School, and uh, you know, I had my degree from Tennessee State. But I never had any money. Like I get paid every two weeks. Once the rent paid, other little bills. I had no money. And uh it this literally happened to me. I, I woke up like two, three o'clock in the morning. And at this time, me and my wife were sleeping on the floor. Sleeping, wow. we had a pallet on the floor with my uh, my daughter who's now, you know, my oldest daughter who's now grown. But I woke up. And I, I said, I just told her, <clears throat> I woke up, I said, baby, I said, we got to let this apartment go. I said, we got to let this apartment go, move in with your grandmother, move in with my mom. I said, uh, I was like, I got to fix my name. I got to fix our name. Wow. So that's the only way we're going to get out of this situation. It's not going to be uh, the paycheck from the school. Because even that part of the apartment that we were staying in, you know, I had gotten it in. I had got that apartment. I had, I had a CPN that I used, you know, wow. back then. Yeah. yeah, we're talking, this was like uh, 2001. <clears throat> I had a CPN living in an apartment off of. So we ended up letting the apartment go. And that put me on my quest to learn about credit. And uh, once I got into it, I got better at it. And I started researching on, uh, business credit and um it just took off from there i just started <clears throat> i started dissecting everything i could about credit everything i could about how credit related to the banks everything i could about how the collection agencies were connected to the credit bureaus and all the laws it became my job um you know like once i got that first lick i quit teaching and that, it became my full-time job, credit, credit, credit. And eventually moved on. I put the first book out. Um, I posted a book yesterday, I think, the yellow book. So a little yellow book. And that's what I started out selling. And then the transition from there, I set up the publishing company, came out with the official book, How to Outsmart the Credit Bureaus. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting mm -hmm. um, distribution through Baker and Taylor. Wow. Um, yeah, I just made them, I gave, I ended up, this guy named Robin Bright, he helped me out a whole lot because, you know, I'm a self-published author. I wasn't, they don't, 
they don't give you distribution. And, you know, he got me distribution and kind of went from there. Uh, I met a couple of people, like I, I met my, well, I've, I've, I've never said this. I said it on one of my events, mm-hmm. who my mentor was. I met a guy named Terrence Harris. He was the first mentor that I had and I watched him. I watched everything he did. I watched how he moved. I watched his conversations. I watched the deals that he did when it came to real estate, the people that he met. You know, if he was talking to them, if it's something that I didn't understand, I would I would be sending a message to my wife as a note to myself. And the rest is history. Yeah. Wow. That's so, amazing. And um, I wanted to ask him uh, the, the second question you came up with, Mike. What is the biggest challenge in teaching people about money today? Because like you said, when you dropped your first book, you said publishing. See, it was no KDP. You know, everybody now is a self-publisher. But what is the difference from what would what, what you, you know, what's the biggest challenge from even from back then versus today to teach people about money today and, and teaching people about money and credit today? What is what's the biggest challenge you find? Biggest challenge that I find is that people listen with their eyes and not with their ears. Mm. See, listening is free. Listening is free and life is like a chess game. So you have to listen to really listen to what somebody's saying in order to decide like what's my next move gonna be. Now the reason why I say people listen with their eyes because they're more attracted to the flashy things that they see. And it gets stuck in their brain like I'm supposed to get rich overnight. You know, mm. Nobody gets rich overnight. You're not gonna get rich overnight. And being rich is having something, um, you've generated something if you use credit to get to a certain um to, to, to get to a certain point where your finances um enable you to invest in something that's going to work while you sleep. Uh and I think that people because they think, well, I'll get rich overnight, they begin to get frustrated. And once frustration sets in, they think it's not clear. So I think the biggest thing that I've noticed, I just said, I always tell people, it's, it's free to listen. Because if you, mm. it's, it's free to listen and, and you have to know when it comes to information, what's real and what's not, what's fake. You know, the internet has made everything like that. It's, it's fast, it's fast. And it confuses people. So they don't know how to distinguish, like, man, is this person real? Is this information that he's putting out for real? And then once you get the information, you have to know how to execute. Mm. And you have to, and you, and you have to execute. Because if you don't execute, um, it's never going to happen to you as far as like, if you, you're trying to uh, get to a certain point in your life where you're comfortable. So, you know, just to answer that question that the biggest challenge is they don't they don't listen. You know, they listening with their eyes. Mm. Like, oh, I can I can get this. It's gonna happen overnight. Like what I'm doing, the this whole process of logistics and transportation in my mind, mm-hmm. I say this is gonna take me three years for it to be in full operation where it makes it's making the the type of money where I can build it. Okay, this is this is something else that I can leave my kids. Yes. Period. Because right now, the you know everything I do is for them. Just basically preparing them for okay, dad gonna die one day, mom gonna die one day. You know, I'm real big on. Well, now I am. I'm real big on insurance, and my wife, <laughs> she's been big on it since we were mm-hmm. in our twenties, but I never took heed to it. So I'm big. I'm a, I like collect insurance policy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, I I've, I've put like I see it on the internet now is you know the UIL policies but been doing that I've been putting money into that every month for years and I collect term like policy because I never know you know and that happened to me like I had a stroke a couple of years ago and I was it could have been it but my family would have been straight they straight now but 
it would have been even better off <laughs> in my death. And that's the way you want to believe it. You want to leave your family in a better position, you know, than them. Like when you were here, when you're gone, you need, they need to be in a better position. And, and I, I be like one of the most, I think, profound things that you always said um, is you don't want to die with an 850 credit score. Like, what good is it to die with the 850 credit score? And that was one of your themes of your book. Before people, it was sexy now. Now it's sexy. Generational wealth. That was always like the driving theme of your book. And I remember used to watching interviews and that's what you say. You don't want to die with an 850 credit score. Like your kids can't inherit your credit score. And um, Dame Dash says something very important. I think that even changed the Breakfast Club. We start to see Charlemagne and all of them. They kind of mocked him when he was talking about, I hustle for my last name. Y'all hustle for your first name. You know, and he was talking about building, you know, institutions or businesses or whatever that you can leave for your children. So I, I just, I know one of those uh, paradigm shifts that I learned from you was that statement itself. You know, a lot of people, they'll, and I tell them, it's not like a peeing contest. A lot of people, oh, I got an 850 credit score. If you got an 850 credit score, it means you're not using it. You yes. know what I'm saying to us? <laughs> because you need to put, use that 850 credit score or that good credit, 740 really. If you're not moving with a 740 credit score, you're basically getting the same interest rates as somebody with an 850 in so many terms, depending on what you're going for. But you want to really have that credit score working for you in that case. Right. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah, Dame Dash, uh, basically what he was saying is you, you never, you're never going to remember a wealthy person. You always remember a wealthy, per a wealthy person's last name. Always. Rockefeller. You know, um, be Bill Gates, it'll be Elon, it'll be Musk. Trump, Trump. Yeah, People Trump. hate him, but uh, let's be honest, you know, Trump. Yeah, yeah. I like Trump. You know, people probably you ain't gonna get no, I ain't gonna say I like him, but I, 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 can't. <laughs> I ain't gonna hate him. I ain't gonna lie. That's, to that's, 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 a, that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole but, nother I, conversation that yeah. folks get ready for. Yeah, I, yeah. I ain't gonna say I, I, I like him. But I don't hate. I, 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 I like him for it because he, he's 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 comical um, to me. But I think some of the stuff he does on purpose, you know, uh, just because of my even my relationships with people from other countries, uh, I understand some. I understood some of the things that he did. And you know, if you're an entrepreneur, then 45 is your guy. If you work the nine to five, you probably wasn't going to like. Mm -mm. It. You know, and I start to, you know, just knowing about how other foreign countries, as far as the whole immigration thing, how they allow a certain number of immigrants. You know, each country has a set number that the United States is going to let in the United in the United States every year. So his thing was, like in Chicago, uh, a guy just told me they dropped off thousands of illegal immigrants in downtown in the hood so what does it do who who is the poor you know at the bottom black people so that makes it even harder but that's a whole nother conversation yeah. no, I, I would like a question into that but go ahead diamond because uh, that, that's what people need to know we want we're gonna go back to that one right yeah now. before before yeah let's let's put a pin in that one but i had a question when it came to the money portion uh, I know my audience is here looking at passive income and the money. And I see that with your books, you have been wildly successful, especially when it comes to the competition that is on Amazon. And my question was, what um, what does that success look like for you? Um, a question, were you an Amazon bestseller? Because the amount of reviews that you have yeah. suggest that you definitely were. Um, 
And uh, when it came to creating your books, was it enough for you to be able to sustain yourself and have financial freedom from the books alone? And also how much time between each book did it take you to write one and then put another one out? Well, I haven't put a book out of in five years. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot happened since then. I, I had the books. I just I didn't put them out. Uh, it probably takes me some books it takes longer than others. Like some books it take me six months. Some books it might take me two months. Mm. I think one book took me a year. Mm -hmm. I think the shorter books, you know, two months. But all of my books, you have to really pay attention to me and what I say. All of my books, it's one, they all go together. Yeah. They all, like I got more of them, but they all go together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had one guy that inboxed me and said, hey, I'm a fan, but the last credits for four people, it wasn't a good book. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it, it had something hadn't, it hadn't clicked with you yet. You know, but once it clicked with him, you would realize what was so good about it. Yeah, but all of them, is, yeah, it's, it's pieces to the book. You know, people are looking for, like Sherry, you asked, what's the biggest challenge? People are looking for like this, like something like, man, something that they're going to get rich mm -hmm. off of. And that's, that's not like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't be trying to boast, but Marvin could attest to this. I do very well. Like I'm straight. My books, he just mm -hmm. asked me with the books. I make a lot of money off of the books. A lot. Like right, right now. I'm getting the books translated to Swahili, Chinese, and Spanish. Mm. Why, why Chinese? Why Chinese? One, it's billions of people. Mm -hmm. Why Swahili? Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm doing something in Kenya right now. And I got a video I was going to post where I bought the land, you know, getting in mm -hmm. as well. Um, when people come to the United States, they know more about the United States history and how it works. They know more about the country than the people that live here. That's because the United States, they only teach people about the United States. So me having a book translated into these languages, okay, because credit is new to them. They, mm. they want to know about it. So what better way if I already have books for them in their language? I sell mm. books in China now, but not, <clears throat> not, not, not as many as it, it, it can be. Mm. So even with that, um, I'm in the process of doing that right now. But the books have been like I, I'm not gonna lie, like I was shocked. Like I made a lot of money. Like I, you know, if you know my story, like at one point the feds was on me. They said, "Hey, you did like 2.4 million dollars in fraudulent loans," but I lost all of that money. Mm. I had to go and get a job. I was working when I when I wrote the conspiracy of credit. I was working as a corrections officer. Wow. In, in, in Memphis. And I had no idea that that book was going to do what it did. But what happened, I ended up doing a podcast like now uh, with this guy, Brother Rich, the Underground Railroad. Oh, yeah. And, man, yeah. And the next thing I know, like, I got a check from Amazon. And the check, man, was big. And I was like, whoa. Like, <laughs> and I ended up, I ended up, uh, I ended up quitting, quitting, uh, Penal for I said, okay, I'm ready to go because I had already, <laughs> had, you know, had my credit that I was gonna start piecing things back together anyway. But yeah, the books have like I was, you know, I was shocked when that happened. But now, you know, people buy the books. Like I get four checks from Audible, uh, from uh, Ingram, from Baker and Taylor, and from the paperback from Amazon every month. It's like clockwork. So even if I, if that alone, like if I, if I needed to live off that money, my family, I could, I could pay, I could pay, you know, a lot of my bills, like with the checks. So I'll, I'll continue to do, you know, put them out. Um, and I make sure that like my family has access to whatever they need to keep it going. Even after I'm gone, cause books, they, they, 
you know, you got people that still read Robert Greene books. Uh, oh, yeah. How yeah. to still read How to Eat. The one Law of, you know, of Seduction of, with by Robert yeah. Greene was another big one, another good yeah. one. 33 Strategies of War. That's another one. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> Yeah, so books, you know. So question, the- so you did that all, when you started publishing your books, you did that all without a following? Like you just put your books out there and they just kind of blew up? Or how did that happen? Yeah, I didn't have a following. When I put out How to Outsmart the Credit Bureau, I, I had no following. Wow, I that's no crazy. Following. Like I, I was going around to the car dealerships in Memphis uh, with the yellow book, selling them for like 10, 10 bucks. Wow. Wow. Now, and like I said, when when I first segue, he started before a- Amazon KDP. Wow. And so this was in like the mid 2000s. So this is how long that this man has been out here putting. And this is the level of knowledge that he has, you know, in the credit game. And that's why we said if somebody that say they know about credit don't like really, you know, uh, know, you know, know him, then they're really not a lot of times abreast on credit because he's been doing it for so long. Now, one thing I want to touch on, um, uh, it, it's, it's a lot like with coming to your books. All right. I want to just highlight, like with you, we had a conversation. Um, and I want to just, Uh, abreast people. If you're not a real thinker, if you are somebody who's a sheep, I'm just going to put it like that. It's very hard sometimes to follow if you uh, are like really into this system, you know, Uh, because you touched on some things and I see some triggers in the comment section. A lot of people are political puppets, you know, they're not a free thinker. No, I'm just I'm just going to keep it 100 because y'all not going to like me. You know, if if you're not, you might have to click off or unfollow whatever. But we're not here for that. If you're in the same situation, right? And you've been doing the same thing and you still got bad credit or you still broke, I suggest if you're wise, it said the uh the, the really the, the 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 definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again and not getting a result. It's so if you result. still broke, you still got bad credit, but you constantly been doing the same thing over and over. And I, I said this a lot. A lot of people are hate the rich way too much. And I'll tell you any day, Trump changed my life with his book. I told you. Uh, 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 the law, I mean, what it was, uh, uh, art of the deal, deal. art of the deal changed my life. And Robert Kika, uh, Kikasabi with, uh, rich dad, poor dad. And so when I'm telling y'all what Mr. Smith even break down in his thing, the conspiracy of credit. And I want to go back to what they don't understand about the Chicago thing. Cause I'm about to break some people hearts (laughs) up in here. You know what I'm saying? Because if not miss me. Explain to them, Mr. Smith, because I made a videos of this. Tell them, and your book talk about this, how they judge your credit scores and how loans, like a lot of people think that I'm being judged off of my good credit in certain areas. I mean, they really are. And this is where I'm going to deal with these sheep because a lot of y'all problem that you don't understand, the game is rigged against you. You in certain communities and they jumping, dropping off people that have no credit score. It's against you. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't understand how the system judge you by the average credit score in your own area. So can you go on like, because even I learned like different things from your book about different codes that they have. And you know what I'm saying on your credit report? Can you just give people a little, I know it's heavy, but a little bit of peak. Yeah, I mean, no, nah, it's, it's heavy, but it's simple. Like you, you, um, like I always say, like when you realize that everything is algorithms, everything, when it comes to mortgage, you know, real estate, 
when it comes to banking, when it comes to credit, it's algorithms. So they they judging you for more than you write than more than just your credit score. There's census tracks involved. Uh, that people have no no census <clears throat> track, redlining, zip zip codes, all of that plays uh plays a major part. Plays plays the biggest part into them deciding whether or not uh how much money they're going to extend you uh or if they're even going to deal with you. And people don't. People don't realize that because people don't they, they don't research things. They like I said, they don't listen. It's it's it's, it's free to listen. Um, so I mean it's it's not that deep. Like it's it's just that simple. Like you can take your credit report, but well, Experian does it more than than anybody. And they they basically telling you on there, okay, you black, you white, okay, you make about thirty thousand dollars, you make about forty thousand dollars a year. Okay, if you make this much, you only gonna qualify. You know, this this how much money we're gonna give you in the loan. This how much money we're gonna give you on a credit card. But we're not gonna give you any money at all. And that plays. It's the same thing even with mortgages. Like, you know, you have to look all the way back into the whole. You know, how ghettos was created and how black communities got divided from the white communities being the suburbs, it's an algorithm, whether you black or white. And a lot of people don't, they don't, um, they don't realize it. They're just going, they're just going based off this person saying, yeah, I got $50,000, you know? And yet when you get all that money, what I always say is more than just about credit, right? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, let me ask you this. When was the last time you seen a homeless person? Any well, anybody any any one of y'all answered it? Maybe about two or three days ago. Did he did he ask you for any money? And if he did, did he no? Did he ask you for any? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he, asked you, he, asked, he asked you for money, right? He asked you for money, right? Even if you gave it to him, which most of the time people don't. When you walked away from him, did you really care? Do you, did you really care about that homeless person? Person, be honest. I did. Yeah. I, yeah. No, do you do you care right now? Care enough to bring them in and change their life? Like, come on, right? Bring them in my so home. that's what people. <laughs> that's what people have to realize. And I'm and I'm I'm, I'm just I'm not going to say uh, people in general, but I'm just saying that's the way you have to put in your mind. This is how the world perceives me when I say world I mean corporations whether it be your job whether it be banks whether it be the credit bureaus whether it be politicians that's what you have to put in your mind they don't care nothing about you the game is not fair no matter how much you want to believe oh you can you can do this you can do that like I have friends like I I for real have friends they got real bread that and the only reason why I came into contact with them was because me trying to do business in bigger spaces. They would never come on this Internet and talk about. How did you get rich? I've tried to get them to come on Zoom calls. They're not going to do it. Mm. When people even realize that rich people are not going to tell you how they got rich. One, it would exert too much energy for them to do that. And they're not going to do that. Number two, when people realize also that that uh, that that when you when you uh let's say if you get a a loan so to speak, it could be for a hundred thousand dollars, and and if you if you don't have the, the right information to even know like, okay, what am I going to do this besides go buy a car or or go invest in a and something that I think might give me a quick return, like you're going to end up, just what you said, back in the same place again. You're going to end up back in the same place, and then you'll be trying to fix your credit again, or you'll be trying to get another loan, and the, and, and the wheels are just turning. And I really so, do think that with people, uh, what it's a lot of, when it comes to politics, Ticks, and I tell people when it comes down to red or blue, neither one is for you. 
It's the same bird, different size of the wings. You need to look at your household a lot of time and you need to do and make decisions best for your household. And like you're saying, that generational wealth piece that I think a lot of people need to focus on and you do need to get in your books and understand certain parts of the algorithm. It's a reason why they're not going to let migrants sit in Martha's Vineyard. Y'all need to understand why would they not do that? It's a reason why they're not going to build low income housing or if they try to in certain areas, why they get in that up out of there. And so um, because it's consequences when it comes to business and people don't understand. I work with banks. I work with algorithms. And so if y'all don't know these little increment, little increment, like little parts of things, you'll be blinded. It's a reason why when business starts up, like when people you're creating an LLC, why people tell you to get a virtual office. If you in a certain zip code, sometimes you don't want to be in that zip code. And you broke that down too, like even in your books about changing like different where you're disputing, changing your addresses on certain things, because a lot of people don't understand sometimes a lot of what, why their resistance to credit and getting things off of their credit report is a lot of these things that people don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like just on how the credit system work. I know I found out in your book, how you was talking about Yo, you know, if you're disputing, you know, changing your address, you were with no, the first ones that really said that back in the day. Now everybody is saying it like it's a matter of fact. But the first time I encountered that, that was you talking about how the post office and it's really true. The post office, you put in that change of address. They now they track that they notify that you put in a change of address. You'll start if you got experience. Ping, ping, your address been changed. You know, wow. so um, a lot of people are trapped in this credit game, even trapped in poverty because they uh, don't really focus on what they'll say. Maybe some of the stuff you talk about is way too deep. No, it's where you need to go. So you understand the pitfalls of these traps that's working against you. So you, I find in your book, you just talk about it on so many levels that people really don't see. And, um, uh, you know, it's just so much to meet the eye, you know, like more than meet the eye that people are seeing that's working against them. So, um, because I can't, even when I do my, when I do my books, I can't always say, or even when I speak, I, can't always say what I want to say. You know, like it's certain things when people, even now, like when people, like I know something right now that I've been doing for years. For years. I know like a certain car play that I can do with a vehicle. And I know how to do it to the point where me taking that car back because of the time frame that you have to take it back mm -hmm. where it shows up on your credit and then show three three months of payment history and it shows paid off perfectly legal but if i get on and tell people one thing i like you say people like parrots and that's why i stopped putting real information on the internet but i know that play so let's say I, I tell people how to do their play. It'll be it'll be it'll be eight up, six months to a year. Uh, they'll be like, okay, they okay, this is this is what they're doing, and they'll change. That's why I always say, I said, rich people are never gonna tell you how they get, how they got rich. They're not, and that's the reason why I always say when people when people say knowledge is power, I would always say no. Knowledge has its greatest power. When it remains a secret. Because if everybody know about it, it's not powerful anymore. It has no power. Like credit. 
like you have to approach credit repair in a certain way um now with ai but now you even before you get to e oscar you got you got the oc ocr you have to deal with so it recognizes thing like oh I've seen this before this letter is frivolous because i've seen this letter before so this is a credit repair coming this is somebody so you have to get past that you have to know how to how to every dispute that you're doing you, you have to know what type of approach to take even like on one of my calls that i've been doing i told people about the whole okay dispute through the ceo's office dispute through the legal department like you you know you have to be persistent but you'll get some results like you got to understand who you're dealing with you got to understand the equifax or if you want to call it Lexus Nexus. A thing that we was using back in the day was major with the whole police thing. We was cop logic. <laughs> These people peep game so much that I would say, oh, they, oh okay, they, I see what they're doing now. They're using cop logic and filing real police reports. I tell you what, we're going to go buy cop logic. And the bureaus bought cop logic. Wow. Checkmate. Wow. So when you on when you on this internet and you putting out all this information, the same way they got the feds looking at the bad guys, the bureau's got people on there too. They gotta know the tricks too. Mm. So that's that's the reason why you gotta be very strategic in how you approach them. People be like, Oh, the stuff in your book don't work. It still works. It still works. But you not you have to know you have to present it in a different way now can't you, you know just like the the world is changing even with ai you have to present it in a different way it works you know? and i think what your book teaches is the fundamentals of the system and my brother mike we play you know chess you know we would do that to play chess and sometimes people try to you know memorize and it's good that people that are really at that higher level memorize openings you know mid-game strategies and endings but if you learn how the real game work you know what i'm saying you can just you know the fundamentals of the game you know where you're not being trapped up that if you learn a certain opening and somebody know how to rebuttal that you know where you you don't know what your next move and i think that's what your books is about it it teaches you the game of credit what is the fundamentals of credit and really uh really the system of credit and i i, I think that's where people need to understand even with their credit profile you were one of the first people i heard talk about putting a real estate account you know making moves putting a paid real estate account getting that like you know different techniques to report on your profile and why that is important. Now, maybe people won't do that, but I'm just saying it's at least gets your mind to where people ownership needs to be part of your credit journey. Go ahead, Diamond. I, I wanted to ask a question. If you could narrow down uh, from all of your books and you could narrow it down to the top three things that people need to know about credit. Like, let's say they're completely beginners, uh, their credit is shot. What is the top three things? Like, okay, you need to know X, Y, and Z about your credit, and you need to do X, Y, and Z about your credit. Uh, probably the, the first thing that I, I would have to say people need to know about their credit, they need to know what's on their credit. <laughs> know what's mm -hmm. on your credit and you know you need to know like okay i see what's on my credit what's good and what's bad okay now i just i I've, I've identified what's good and what's bad okay now i know what to take off okay i know what to take off now what's going to be what's what's going to be my next plan of action and then okay this is the next plan of action let me get some information to make sure that i'm disputing this correctly you follow me uh and then even in the in the process of doing that i would also be thinking about what do i need to put on my credit to enhance it 
to give me the score that I'm looking looking for. And like your mom spoke about, um, you have to decide like, am I in? You know, a lot of people don't know this, but okay, am I in the right zip code? Because you can buy a zip code now. You could buy a residential, just like you do virtual business addresses. You can do virtual residential addresses. You know, uh, same way it has good zip codes. So, I guess if that answers your question, like, cause you know, kind of hard to say. That's the way I. That's that would be my approach. Cause a lot of people don't even understand their credit. And that's, that's the reason why I feel like you need to learn credit. You need to learn it. You need to try to work through it. Because if I'm teaching it, somebody else is teaching it, what happens when they don't teach it anymore? Somebody, you know, what happens? You, 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 you're, in this, you, 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 you're handicapped. So, and then when you learn about credit, it opens your mind up to to so many other things though. Okay, this, this, I understand this now. If you follow me, like when I, when I start to learn about credit, okay, man, I understand how this goes with real estate. I understand how real estate goes with banking. I understand like, okay, if I want to, if I want a real estate loan, this bank is, this is what they do, man. This is one of their top products. So I'm gonna go to this bank for a real estate loan. Like even with business credit, oh, business credit card is one of their top products. So I, I'll go, I'll go to this bank. Okay, I even get deeper. Like okay, I know this bank don't really mess with black people, so I ain't going there. But I know this bank and whatever state they love lending to minorities, so I'm gonna go open up an account and I'm gonna get some money from them. Cause they advertise you got banks that advertise like they miss like we look we 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 provide loans to minorities you know so all of these things you know i might be all over the place or some people might not get what i'm saying that's the reason why i say my books they all go together you gotta you gotta read them you gotta stuff's gotta start clicking with you but yeah mm -hmm. One of the questions I wanted to ask, and Mike listed, why the title "Credit is for Poor People"? Uh, that people are, you said, uh, people are addicted to poverty, and that the art on that was really like it throws you back because it's a child holding a sign that said, uh, "When the poor has nothing else to eat, they'll eat the rich." Can you explain, like, because that was very, like, you know, it's deep. What was you trying to relay in that in that book and in that statement? Credit is for poor people. <laughs> it is. And the one thing you have to realize is that if I'm if I'm poor, if I'm born into poverty, what do I have? What do I nothing. have? I don't have cash. I have yep. nothing. But I do have my name. I have my name. That's it. And who needs credit more than a person that's got money? Mm. I do. I need it. Donald Trump, like you said, trigger. I remember seeing him on his show. He said he was in a restaurant with about 20, 30 people. He said it came out, oh, Mr. Trump, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay for anything. And he said, I'm rich. But you got people in the restaurant, they're not rich. They gotta pay. Follow me. So mm -hmm. the rich person, the rich person's name operates just like your name operates, only he gets more benefit. He's mm. rich and you're poor. So the only thing that you have to stand on is your name. So you have to, you have to be mindful. You have to, your your credit has to be on point. So credit is for poor people, not the rich. Truth be told. The truth be told, I've got to, a, credit has become a luxury to you. Like, I don't use my credit like that anymore. I, 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 don't, I don't check my credit score the way that I used to. Like, I don't, I don't use it like that anymore. Because I'm, I'm, I've am i put things in, in place like this for, I got, like I told you, I borrowed money for myself to go buy five trucks. 
All right. I borrowed it from myself. And that came from me putting money into my insurance um, into my insurance every month. Every month. It's like one thing I my, I got a I got a six year old granddaughter. You know what, what me and my wife make her do right today that we make her do. We make her we give her an allowance. Like she she's in school now, kindergarten. So we give her eight dollars. Every day we give her eight dollars. We make her save five dollars every day. So you save five dollars for three hundred and sixty three hundred and uh what three hundred and fifty two days. I think you 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 save five dollars every day. So at the end of the year, she got a nice little nest egg. Same thing with an adult. If you save forty dollars every day or twenty dollars, you save forty dollars, you have about fifteen thousand dollars at the end of the year. It's easy. Because most people miss off forty dollars in a day, whether it's on fast food or whatever, they definitely miss off twenty dollars. So once you start to, we, reason why we're doing it because okay, we're putting this in there, we're putting this in place now, now, now. It's a habit. It becomes mm. a habit to her. She wants to say, like, "Ooh, look how much!" Like last year, in the last year, oh man, I saved this much money. You have to do that as you. Even as an adult, mm. same thing. Same thing as you dream. You have to when you when you dream about things in life. You have to have the mindset like like a kid. You got to believe. Like when you know when you're a kid, yeah, you feel like you feel like you could do. I could be any. I, I can do anything. Like life, you just carefree. You have to remain that way. But the problem is, as the older we get, life begins to beat up on us. And we don't believe it anymore. We don't believe it anymore. Some make it through. Some some stay focused. Like I always tell the, the story of my dad. Like he would take me into these houses. We couldn't afford them, but I, I used to think my my father was rich. Nah, not even close. But he gave me the capacity to dream. Well, let me That's ask why you, I said it's credit is for poor people. Well, I want to ask you this question that led right up to that. What is the uh, common misconception do you think people have about credit? What's the common misconception? Hmm. That's a hard one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think when most people think of in terms of credit, they think because they have a good credit score, they pretty much gonna be able to get whatever they want. And that's not that's, that's not always true. Yeah, it's not always true. You can have <laughs> my wife has very good credit. I do know my wife does. Mm -hmm. And it's been some things she didn't get approved for. Mm -hmm. like, and we ended up, you know, end up just buying it or whatever, but just because you got a good, great credit, man. Look, listen, it's not about the credit. Mm. It's not about the credit. Like if I had no credit, I have enough knowledge, enough experiences now that I can go produce some money. Like I'm, I'm. Look at me. I'm in a truck. I'm in a truck right now. I went all the way through the process. Let me go get my CDL. Let me learn everything about a truck. Let me learn everything about the business. Let me go to freight brokers. Let me learn about freight brokers because I'm in my mind, I'm putting a whole business together. And it wasn't credit and do none of it. Not, nothing away. It has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. It will one day, but mm. on a grander scale. But when people learn like, yeah, use the credit. Use it. Use it if you can use it to get to a certain point, but don't depend on it. Mm. Think rich people, do you think if you can talk to a real rich person, somebody really has money? I don't mean I don't mean somebody has a a couple of million dollars, but somebody that really has money. You think they depend on credit? Mm. They're not depending on credit. They putting together deals mm. like. Like, 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 I, like, like, I wish I had the video I'll show you. I have not been out of this country. 
I did a deal in Kenya because of somebody, the whole thing, they, they over there, I'm over here. I did all of this via phone, fax, everything. Bought the land, I'm going over there, but credit had nothing to do with it. Mm. So when people get that in their mind, like I've been, I always say it, like, you get in your mind, like it's not about, cause it ain't about the credit. I got a question. I got a question. So, say you have somebody that, like, like say somebody on the stream, they like they, they're struggling with their bills. Mm -hmm. they, they they don't have the money. They're struggling with their bills. So, what's the process? Would you tell them? Because I know you said before you could borrow a million dollars fast. You can make it. So, right. what would, what would process would you tell them? Like, what steps would you tell them to go? What would you do to how to how to get you out your hole? How to get you to a spot where how do a person get to that spot where you at right now? Or coming close to it. I'm gonna tell you what I did, and they might not want to do this, but that's what a hole that you hear now, man, that you hear now, credit part. When I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. and I my bills were, you know, I had a lot of bills. That's when I started thinking. That's what that's what took me to the whole place where, okay, I'm gonna get a homeless person. I'm gonna go get my. I'm gonna go get my cousin that he don't really care about his credit, like, but he has it. And he don't know. He don't know the resource he had. So I talk to him and let him know this is what this what's gonna happen. And I do it now. Bam, I got a I got a foundation to build off of. So if I was that person, and then we got to get to a point. It's like Marvin told me. He said, man, we got to trust each other. We got to trust each mm. other. So if I'm that person, I got to find somebody that that has something that I can use, like a relative, and they don't know what they have. They don't know what they have. And just ask them, hey, can we do this together? And do it. Like, do it. Like, I, 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 I put together a deal off just I brought a small group of people together to get something done that I knew I couldn't do myself. I just like literally did this a couple of months ago because I couldn't do it by myself. I made sure I, I made sure I made sure all the paperwork was right. We got it. We, we, everybody signed and did whatever they need to do and we got it done. So if I'm that person, I'm in over my head with bills like you got it. Let me think. What can I do? Oh, oh, I can do that. That's that's what I that's what I did. Like, and that's how I got to the whole thing. Oh, credit investors. Now you hear people say credit partners. Mm. Okay. And that's a, a excellent thing because that's one of the themes that we've been pushing as a family. Yeah, I was about to say. Does that mean collaboration? Are you talking about collaborating with your family members and collaborating with your network? Is that is that what you're saying? Um, you have to, you have to, you have. When I say collab, when like when I talk about credit investors, you have to actually, like, if you, your mom, and your uncle, mm -hmm. okay. At this point, I'll say, oh, we're gonna create a company because we're trying to, we're trying to do a certain big business venture. Mm -hmm. All of us gonna be owners on this company. All of us has, all of us have great credit. Or if one person don't have good credit well he can't go on the he can't go on the company mask head. it's gonna be the other two we're gonna go to the bank we know that we we on we on point with our credit you know that's when we're gonna go to the bank and we're gonna get the money that we need together that's what i mean when i say you know credit investor and that's what we've been talking about on the channel building businesses with people that you can if your credit like I was telling people, if your credit is messed up, you might have to that that child that's coming into adolescence, you might have to start working with your spouse if you have a business and build people credit scores that's around you. You know, finding different ways, like you're saying, it's about the deal, you know. And and I think one of the themes that you always seem to come back to. You, it's not just to get credit to get things. You need a strategy. You really need a plan. And like you're saying, the plan is to create generational wealth in some kind of cash flow. 
in that, getting assets, like you're saying, doing deals. And uh, I think a lot of people, they want to leverage credit to get just non-assets. No, I'm just, it's getting non-working uh, debt assets. You know what I'm saying? Nothing uh, that that is going to make money for them. And one prime example, like Mike would say, uh, now you have all these platforms. And Diamond, this is a segue to your group. Why are y'all getting repos when you got Toro? If your car going to get taken anywhere, you at that verge, wouldn't it be better to put that car on a platform? Make that car work. Because I have talked to people, you got, they got two spouses in the home and one of the co spouse car going to get repo. Why wouldn't y'all just ride together and put that car on a platform mm -hmm. and let that car at least work for you? You know what I'm saying? Bunk together. And it's about that working together to, to strategize and kind of get yourself out of that hole, you know, to, to start finding ways to cash flow. And maybe if that car produced for you, you know, now you got a working asset and you might, if you you didn't let your credit get to that point where it's being damaged, you might have now can go get another vehicle. But it's like what you're saying, trying to find partners, try to work to, to together or find people that you can work with to try to cash flow or even build businesses. Even we had the business seminar and that's one of the ways. Maybe if your credit is not right there, you need to put somebody else as the majority owner on that business. And you're the less owner, like under 25% or so. Right. Mm -hmm. And let them be on the uh, on the articles of uh, incorporation or even um, what is that? Your uh, business, uh, um, uh, what is that? Uh, not the business agreement, but uh, the operation agreements, because sometimes no, banks want to see that. So, right. you know, start to, you know, think outside the box, you know, to, to get yourself out of those situations and ultimately to start making cash flow. Because I think a lot of people are over leveraging themselves. But now we have a lot. And I know people going to get mad. You know, when you got all this money printing and there's certain policies that's coming, like, you know, with with just financial lending, higher interest rates. Y'all don't know those are policies being put in place. You know, that's hurting you. And now with inflation, y'all can't outwork this. You know, everything is going up except your pay. So you have to figure out ways to 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 start cash flowing because like I tell people a lot of them don't have a credit problem a lot of y'all got a cash flow problem you know like I haven't met people that just said I'm just gonna mess up my credit today you know something either happened like they lose a job a child gets sick you know or something and they just don't have enough income coming in so go ahead Diamond uh, with that being said, uh, there was a couple of questions in the chat that asked, well, what do I do? Okay, say the credit, you know, I messed up my credit. How do I start rebuilding my credit to be on the right page? Because that was a couple of questions over here in the chat. If, if, if they messed up their credit? Yeah, like it, I, I messed up. Now, how do I start rebuilding? You got to get to dispute. You got it. It's, it's, it's that simple. You got to start disputing. You got to, you got to, depend on how many accounts that you have. Like, we got 10 accounts. Okay. I'm going to start with these three accounts and I'm going to focus on these three accounts. I'm going to go in hard. I'm going to go in hard on these three accounts. And that's all I'm going to focus on. I get them done. I'm going to take the other three and I'm going to focus on it. Because you don't want to do it all if you got 10 bad accounts. I'm disputing all of them. Like, you don't want to do it that way. At least I would. I'll just focus on so many. Three, I'm going to focus on these. I'm going to do what I got to do. Uh, as far as from the standpoint of, I'm going to dispute with the credit bureaus. I'm going to dispute with the, the creditor. And I'll just do it like that. And when I got those three off, I'll move on to the next three. As you know, that way you're not over um, extending yourself. You know, 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's a marathon, not a sprint. You got to definitely yeah. you gotta think of it like that. Yeah. Uh, I guess another question I would have is uh, a question that we get a lot is, okay, say someone has, they have late payments, they got collections, they got anchor, like they, they got the whole nine going on. What do they attack first? Do they attack the collections first? Do they attack the inquiry? Like what should be the plan of attack first? Well, the inquiries, collection, late payments, obviously the inquiries would be first. The collection would be second. The late payments, you then you 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 almost want to try to take that whole account off. Yeah. Late payments are, are hard to get off. I had somebody reach out to me about, you know, I I don't, I'm not talking about nobody, mm -hmm. but they were like the person was like, you know, they bought a letter from this person like five hundred dollars or whatever, saying said late payments wasn't real and you could use this late, you know, letter to get <laughs> the late payment off or something. And it didn't work. And it's not gonna work. Late <laughs> payments, they real. Like be late on the bill and see how real they are. So that's the order that I did I would inquiries, collection accounts, and then the late payments. But the late payments, you wanna try to take those completely off. No, don't dispute with the creditor, dispute with the credit bureau, whatever strategy you have to come up with. You don't want to go to the creditor and dispute a late payment because they got all your stuff. They know mm -hmm. you late. They know you late. So, you know, that that's that's what I would do. Um, there was another question from Vanessa. I want to address it. She was asking um what to put on your credit report if your credit is completely clean or if it's blank. So where do you start? Oh man, today you got a lot of different options. It ain't just Capital One anymore. You got all the like, what what, what is it? You got self credit builder, all these type um, rent reporters. You got a lot of stuff that you can just connect your Hulu account, your Netflix account, and they'll start reporting for you. And of course, you can old Capital One is faithful when you have no credit for a Capital One car, whether it be unsecured or secure. Um, and, of course, I can't tell you over this, but there's a car trick that you can actually go to a car lot, a particular car lot, and get a whole car put on your credit. Even if you put down money, you know you're going to get that money back. But you can hit a report. It's, just, it's the way you have to do it. And it like it works been using it you know now my question is do you advocate for people to now go towards that business side of credit say if a person now say i like the young lady said what what do i you know put on my credit report say from her stance vanessa now she let's say and i'm not saying you did, did vanessa but just say she did the work she cleaned her credit report up what would you say to those people who now have a good credit score what would be your kind of mindset or a mode of attack or the best way to maintain that or really excel from that good credit score? What would be your standpoint for people oh, like yeah. that? I'm definitely going to the business side. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to build a business. I'm definitely going, I'm the CEO. Like I'm definitely going, that's the, that's the direction that I'm, that I'm going in. Because if, if once you start to build, build it, build your, the credit up from the bit from from the business side it enables you to do like you'll be amazed at the type of deals you're able to do now as a business as opposed to doing it from on a personal level it's like one of my my uh, not this one last book i put a whole list of a lot of the banks that i've used over the years since 2004 <clears throat> some that I forgot but when you start to set up your business and build your business credit like let's say Tinker Bank in Oklahoma 
you don't have to be in business too. You know, you hear that uh, you got to be in business two years. You don't have to be in business two years with a bank like Tinker, right? They, they'll, they'll, they'll give you a loan. They'll, they'll give you a business loan. You just got to make sure all the other little things in place, like, okay, you registered as a foreign corporation in Oklahoma if, if you're not based out of there, things like that. Okay, you got um, your personal credit. They're going to look at that. But it's, if it's clean, even if it's clean, they'll start you out more than likely with something, even if it's $25,000. Like, so it's banks like that throughout the United States. You have to, you have to just do your research and, and seek them out and get started from there. But I would definitely, like, put myself behind the business. No a question that people ask a lot, just to, for people that have grace, say, okay, I'm a person that clean my credit report, right? But I don't know what I want to do in business. Like, you know, I know some people, like some of us are more, a little more experienced, you know, like, you know, we have other people we network with that can bring you ideas, but say the other person here, you know, they might be here they're on a job, a nine to five. What would be some advice for them to kind of get in that mode of thinking out of exchanging time for kind of money, kind of mindset? Where would you, are you, could you give some advice on how, what they might should look into or where to start? Like as far as a business idea? Or yeah, just getting on that business side of credit or, you know, business idea, how to generate income. Because if I get this credit, right, access to this credit, this business credit, and if you got good credit, you could do that very easily if you set a, you know, business up properly. But what should I do now with this 50,000, uh, 100,000? Uh, like, what would I like, do? Like, I'm not going to lie to you. The only reason why I for me to answer that for someone at this stage is because things have changed since I've been there. Like, and so my mm -hmm. idea of what I'm going to do is a lot, it's a lot bigger than mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm probably going to like, I'm, I'm at the stage oh, now where, okay, I want to do dairy farming. They're not there. And because I'm, I'm, I'm not, in a place where I'm just starting out anymore and times have changed. So it would be kind of hard for me to tell them to invest in this because some people, when things don't go right and they don't, you know, that could damage them. It could discourage them to the point where they stop. But, you know, when a person, when it, if, if I'm on a nine, if I'm doing a nine to five, one thing that should motivate you is this. And this might sound crazy. You got to think to yourself, I'm going to die one day. Point blank. But do I want to die in the position that I'm in now? Do I want to die working this job? Do I want to die somebody else having control over my life? Let one, that should be one of the motivating factors for you. And then I would start to really look what's 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 the trend right now what's what can i what what are people investing in uh and this is you could just get on um I'll tell you one thing that I, I do sometimes and see that's that's why i say it's hard sometimes i have ideas in my head and i'll just google like when i start to invest invest in uh dry boat and cargo shipping that was an idea I just had in my head. So I started to Google and do research, you know, and that doesn't cost a lot of money, but I was just, at the time I was just taking money and I wasn't trading. I was just buying and holding because I knew even then, okay, it's not going nowhere. Ships, they're going to sell because it makes the world go round. Just like you have people in trucking. Like before I got into trucking, I was already two truck companies. I've been buying stock in. You know, because I already knew people say, well, I ain't no money in trucking. Uh, that's a lie. Somebody making money. I'm looking at 100 trucks right now. Right. So I know like like beyond me 
driving the truck, I was already investing in trucks because the truck stops, if the ship stops, the world stops. You, you, you know, so I would have to say they have to, though they, they have to really think and pay attention. That's why I said, listen, even if you, you can look at the news sometimes. I don't mean the news that's, that, that uh, reports that they just reporting crime. I mean the other type of news. Like they're talking about politics. They're talking about business. They're talking about Wall Street. Maybe that might give you an idea. Uh, but I, like I said, it would be kind of hard because I'm not in this space anymore. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm in a different... <laughs> I'm in a different, I'm in a different space. So my idea of what, you know, my, it might not be what they need at this time, you know, I don't know. But no, that, that is, that is totally, totally fair. I mean, go ahead, Diamond, you ask the questions in the comments. I have a quick question that comes from the chat. So uh, somebody was saying they were newly introduced to you. What is the first book that they need to purchase from you? My my favorite book is the Credit Dictionary. Okay. Like I told y'all, a lot of people think, "Oh, it's just a, diction, a dictionary." I, you know, if you read the book, then you know it's more than I talk about a lot of. You know, I even put something. I even put a poem in there that I wrote. You know what I'm saying? But I talked about when I say that book has some of me in it. This, this, those were my, uh, my thoughts and some of my feelings that I had. Um, when I was struggling, like trying to like get to this place that I'm in now, like I always, like somebody asked me today, they said, he said, did you, did you, did you always, did you know you was going to make it? Did you, did you ever have doubt or whatever? When I was going through a lot of stuff, I said, I always knew. I always knew I was going to make it. I didn't know how. I always knew that I was going to have some things that I wanted in life. I didn't know how. And that's that's pretty much how you, you, you're not gonna know how. Hell, yeah, because if you knew how, like it probably scared the hell out of a lot of us if we knew, <laughs> okay, man, we might go through this in order to get to this place. So I don't want to go through that. Like, you know, you like it's almost like Tracy Morgan got <laughs> he got hit in the back by a Walmart truck and got ninety million dollars. Well, I don't want to go through that. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like life. So you know, people, the, a person just has to keep in mind, like, like I know I, it's, well, I'm not a person. I'm just, I'm just saying me. I, I told them like I, I knew that I was gonna make make it to where I wanted to be. I just didn't know know how. And now, I'm, I'm, I truly am like happy with where I'm at. Like I think when you asked me about the books and all that, like. I knew that my family was in a good position when I had I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. I had a stroke and I was down for a whole year. I knew my family was in a good position because we didn't miss a beat. We didn't miss a beat. The only thing we did was we spent more we we spent more money, but we didn't miss a beat. My wife and kids then then nothing stopped. Then nothing stopped. You know, well, maybe you can give some insight to this question. Antoine Wright said, um, is, is it good to pay, or it was somebody else that, is it good to pay off your monthly debts every month for your credit? Like your uh, credit cards, I believe this is what they're saying, like, you know, totally down. My FICO would tell you, don't do it. Other people would mm -hmm. tell you, no, don't do it. But me, myself, do it. Like I pay, I, you know, if I when I do use my credit card, I, I just pay them off. But like I said, I'm not I'm not using them like that. I'm not using them like that. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> credit cards is debt. It's debt. You know, and your your job is to get out of debt, use okay. them for what you need to use them for, and then get out of it. All right. Like, like. I keep resorting back to the guy that called me today because, you know, I've talked to him now. We He's a real cool guy. Like, I just told him, like, here, this this, this is some of the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. You know, do this. 
And it, it takes a little bit of money to do these things. And then before you know it, oh, I got I got money saved up. Mm. You know, it takes a little bit of, you know, I, I, I just told them some of the things that, that, that I did, like, where I, let's say one company, I just, I just sold some stuff. I sold some stock, you know. But, but, but for the most part, I don't sell stock. Like, mm. I just, for what I'm investing in, I just buy and I, and I, and I'm, I'm holding it because I don't worry about, about it. It's not going anywhere. Well, let me ask you one last question because we got a Donnie Brook in the chat. You don't mention the CPN now. <laughs> and we got to address this. I was going to say that. Yeah, we got to address this. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, they like you know because you mentioned earlier back in the day you had to use. The CPN. <laughs> Can you please give people well, the scan have... on the CPN because we got people like, no, you could. People want to know what a CPN what is. is. Yeah, what a CPN. How do you use it legally? Because they're hearing that a CPN is illegal, and um, yeah, what, what is a CPN and how? Okay, so so. I used to have a course. I don't have the course no more. I actually used to show how to make the CPN and all that. A CPN is not illegal, right? Mm -hmm. It's illegal. Like, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, I'm, I'm telling you this from my own experience. I had the Secret Service show up at my door. And when you think you're flying on the radar, you're not. Mm -hmm. They had all of my numbers, like, that I had created. They had a folder with all of my numbers, right? But what they didn't know, like the guy said, we don't know if these came from an old lady or a baby, right? Mm -hmm. But we're going to reach out to the credit bureau, blah, blah, blah. I said, cool. Because I already knew it was all my information. The only thing that was made up was a, the number, right? So the only mm -hmm. thing the creditors could do to me was accelerate the loan. That means close it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because it was my name, my date of birth, all of that. I ain't steal nobody information. But you got some people that's not making the CPN correct. Like I don't use them no more because they not they not like they used to be. Like when when we was using them back in the day, we was getting that, we was getting bread with them like like a hundred thousand. Like like we was getting like you can't do that now. So I don't I don't even see the use for them. And if you if you get one now, you have to have a lot of patience to really build it up, and it has to be built out the right way. But they're not illegal. I, I seen on on um. Instagram with a girl guy was at the mm -hmm. dentist. She got busted because that was somebody else's information. But what are they gonna bust you on if it's your own information? Identity theft? Nah, it's me. Well, like I will CPN. say this for the people. He just said the feds visit him. So yeah, if whether yeah, it's illegal yeah. or not, like me paying my taxes, it's a debate over is taxes legal or not i just don't want the feds at my door so i yeah. think i'm going well, by well, past the fed thing and i just well, clean my credit when they when they when they when they came to my door like it was you know that was one of the reasons like you gotta think i was doing this stuff back in the day hey yeah so even, even even with even with the feds they don't know everything they didn't understand what i was doing so this is new to them what I like what I was doing back back then is new to them. You know, the whole with the homeless people and going to the banks. I had control of them. Like if I use a if you I'll tell anybody, if you use a credit investor, you just you need to make sure you got all your paperwork in place. The agreement, um, the power of attorney, everything. Because you you know, if anything comes up, nah, like this, like this person is aware. This person is involved. Blah blah blah. So and, that, and that was know, the reason. Biggie said something. He said about you know hustling. All the money I stacked was on the money for bail. You know. So at the same right. time, something might be because a lot of people don't understand what he said. He did that back in the day. So you might use this and get something with a CPN. People have this debate across the world whether it's legal or not. But here's Sherry thing. Is it worth the risk? What is your thing, Mike? You talk about game strategy. Uh, right, right. What oh, uh oh, no, oh. what's that that 
the the uh, what you said the well, the, the poker the game strategy well, expected value. It's almost well, like basically, like is the value. risk worth the reward? Is yeah. the thing. If I gotta have feds at this point, y'all, he's talking yeah. back in the day. Back in the day, you could get multiple social security numbers. People was rocking it like that. But today, it ain't flying like that. Well, let me, let me tell you what it was that Uncle Mike said. Because I remember what Uncle Mike said. He said, can you live with the consequences? Yeah, can you live with that? You ready for it? <laughs> he said, can you live with the consequences? If the thing don't go the way that you thought it was going to go, can you live with those consequences? And maybe Mr. Smith can stand two toes down, ten toes down in front of the feds. I might not. Oh, I can't. No, I might not right. be under the pressure right. under the feds. I'll yeah, let them know I, where I, all the bodies is buried, or the, yeah. all of y'all bodies is buried. No, I, want, I wasn't. Don't don't. <laughs> now I wasn't happy about. I wasn't happy about none of that. Like like I wasn't happy about none of that. That's not. That's not anything that uh, that I wanted. You know, it happened. I went through it. Yeah, I started losing my hair when it happened because I <laughs> we're talking about the police. We talking about the FBI. So, man, I was I ain't gonna lie. Like when they when it first the very first time I, I found a car from it was the postal inspector. And that, that that came from wow. when you talk about that whole jamming thing. Yeah, jamming yeah, the credit file exactly. back then. That came from it was a car from the postal inspector. You know, please call me. So yeah, I was nervous because mm -hmm. you know, this 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 something new. So now nah, I don't. I, don't <laughs> I wasn't happy about that. Then they they had they they subpoenaed my wife and me before a grand jury. My wife was pregnant at the time with, with our second kid, and then she didn't, she didn't have nothing. She didn't know what what I was doing. You know. Well, so that just sound like a no CPN. Right? <laughs> the moral of the story, kids. Yeah, but that wasn't for that wasn't for the CPN. But <laughs> if you asking me, like with this with the CPNs now, like I wouldn't use them. Like it's that's old. <laughs> yeah, more, that's more old. A story. Lot. I saw a story where Wesley Snipes wasn't paying his taxes, and he was trying to, but he did some jail time. You know, you I, I don't have a legal fee, so I just break them off their little money to live my life peacefully, y'all. So uh, what I'm just saying, y'all, just the long story short, because a lot of people do, you know, go back and forth with that. I would avoid it right now. That's just Sherry. I mean, whether or not, you know, just like the taxes thing, is taxes illegal? It's a lot of people, well, if you don't sign the 1040, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know. They might be right. They might be right. I just don't want the smoke, y'all. I don't want the smoke. You know what I'm saying? So I'll break off these folks some of their money just to live a peaceful life. And so what I'm telling y'all, maybe y'all should just, you know, live your peaceful life. But get it how you live it, if that's how you feel. If you want to listen, you know, with the coldest winter ever, when she said at the end, I wanted to tell her, but she wouldn't listen anyway. Some of y'all ain't going to listen anyway. So, but I'm just telling you, do you got to do the bid like the girl from the, like winter, from the coldest winter ever? Do you have to go through that or could you avoid all of that? And I feel like you can, like he just said, build in business credit with, Partners, that sound more safer to me. That's the line to take. That that's that's all I'm just saying. That when he said that, feds didn't come into play. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't know. Maybe I nah, thought the, the story nah. wrong, but I didn't hear feds proceed. <laughs> I shared it last. The last. Me. <laughs> so no feds. Last, came. That's a good. Yeah. That's the for me. <laughs> the last interaction that I had with the FBI was this. <laughs> The last thing one of them said to me, I was walking out of they they're located on Humphreys in Memphis. And and it was a lady that was heading all of it. And the last thing she said to me, she said, So what are you doing now? I said, I'm writing books. <laughs> and she said, Well, well, keep writing books. That was the last <laughs> last time I ever seen somebody from somebody that hashtag no fans. Yeah, hashtag <laughs> no fans. <laughs> 
Uh, I think we what, what we learned. Hashtag keep writing books. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag write books. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag write books. So, so what I got to take away. Write the book. I think, I think <laughs> business partners is the way to go. You know, and, and, and I'll be honest, y'all. If y'all can learn how to cash flow, honestly, um, even from the times when he was doing business, and Michael can say that in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s, you don't have all these fintech companies. You even if you got bad credit now, you guys, if you learn how to, like he said, that skill set of making money, you can kind of get funded now. Yep. And so that's that's what he, you know he's telling you credit. And it was the bar was so heavy. If y'all ain't catch it, he said credit is for poor people yeah. because if you poor, you don't have nothing but your name. Yeah, you know. So I think one of his takeaways was saying if you're not in that place, if you don't have money, maybe you know focus on the value of your name. And doing a CPN maybe might not all the time be your name, or maybe variations of your name. So, but. We want you, I, I want you to prosper long-term, you know? So if I, if you take Sherry advice, go with the plans and strategies, even through his experience that he's telling you is the long-term plan that now he's in trucking. You know, if y'all read his books, he touched on some of this stuff or follow his story. I, I kind of knew that part of his story, mm -hmm. but this is why he kind of now, he he built businesses, you know, that was just also, for interested in the fact that he was able to have. I mean, because 700 reviews on an Amazon book is crazy. That means that you probably had 10 times more uh, uh, purchases because most people don't leave reviews. So to have 700 plus reviews is crazy. And to have that without a following, without being, you know, famous and not being the Obama's uh, is absolutely insane. And so it's just like, it's just following that thing that you know well and being able to produce something from that, from your knowledge and from what your experience was, is really astonishing to me. And the fact that you were able to produce multiple books from that is really, really cool to me. And 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 being able to not only, like you said, those royalties that you're going to get from those books is going to go over to your family is really, really, really cool to me. And let me let slow me, you down, Diamond. He's famous oh. in my book. I wasn't saying it like that. I wasn't saying it like that. You know, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's them little, them little things. Like if you're a Star Trek person, you might not know who uh, Dr. Well, I, I, I'll say, I'll say you are. You are Trekkie my <laughs> So, no, nah, I'm just going to let you know that you, you famous in my book. No, you I didn't mean it like that. No, no, but no, I know what you're saying, because yeah. it's amazing because what we're saying though yeah. this man been putting out game but yeah. way before amazon like what he's yeah. telling you well, back before then, social media like before but media. yeah but but you you gotta really understand what he's saying with the publishing yeah. houses back in the day like you said you couldn't get a book deal without being known like that it costs money to print those books that's so, what I'm saying. That's yeah, what I'm saying. so that's a shame that you were able to do that without having the publication behind you, without having a company, a manager behind. That's crazy. That to me, it's just crazy to be able to do that. That's that's astonishing. And yeah. it's a way that is telling you the cash flow because yeah. this man said he didn't get an education in really credit. He used his knowledge of him getting out there learning. And this is what we tell y'all all the time. Y'all can get a following, create books now on Amazon off of your own personal now knowledge. He might not be a uh, uh, certified this, this, and that, but the knowledge this man know from being in the game is well beyond, you know, of anybody I heard that that so called got that education talking sur surface level. And so use use that like you know Tim Ferriss always talk about the four hour work week and just taking information and you guys can make an empire. So I, I'll land my, that plane there, Mr. Smith. It was a pleasure to have you. So I'm gonna let Michael end on y'all question, Diamond, and um, I don't want to keep you any longer. It was just an awesome pleasure to have you here. 
Oh man, I'm I'm I was happy to come. Like I like I said, I hadn't done this in a minute, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, you welcome hey, back honestly. anytime. We here every Saturday, so if you want to stop <laughs> let, through, let me, let me let me say this. I I just <laughs> thought about something. Like when you have people that's trying to do things, they do things. They can do things as a family. Like one thing, me and my wife, um, one that that we we did that it doesn't cost a lot of money. Like you can get in with fifty or a hundred thousand. Sometimes you can invest in these small boutique hotels. Mm. You can and, and and you can get residuals off of that. And you know the buy-in. Like I said, there have been some buy-ins that was only fifty fifty thousand dollars, or even you know. A hundred thousand, stuff like that. Multiple streams of income. So for the person that had asked that question, you know, they might not be there, but they can, they can, they can get to that point, you know. So I do a lot of things. I I, I do a lot of things. And I, I want y'all to pay attention. This man had money for so long. He just said y'all could just drop fifty or a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yo he's this way so this how life good life has gotten to him from learning the game of credit you know what i'm saying because man just for being at that space in life where you come from to be able to really invest you know because a lot of people aren't even there like that i got the whole um yo mike do you got the credit is for poor people can you please hold up do you have that it's in the i got it, I got it on kindle i got everything on kindle oh, y'all gotta room. look at that it look like, it look like uncle <laughs> mike, let's, let's, let's mike let's got it in his office hey. i got the whole thing but that credit is for poor poor people y'all gotta look at the the uh the cover on that it yeah. was just so pro uh profound i'm so message. perplexed that you were able to do that with just word of mouth that's crazy like that's crazy Man. because now we have to do so much promotion to get a book going so even mm -hmm. if even if mom like you with your following you would have to tell people yo this book is out mm -hmm. but but to put put a book 700 reviews is crazy on a book that's crazy because yeah. that means like 10 yeah. x People have purchased that. That's crazy. So it's just yeah, that's, that's, that's the reason I, I I posted something the other day. I just posted. It was that book that that Mike had. Um, like Amazon has like the top one hundred books in credit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm always I'm always gonna have a book in there, but I I was just showing like Robert Kiyosaki, <laughs> thirteen. I was number mm -hmm. twelve. The only person, the person that always be at the top. And that's because his following mm -hmm. is so big. Is um Dave Ramsey? What's Dave Ramsey? Dave Ramsey, yeah. yeah. Dave Ramsey. I I had been over. I had not been able to overtake him yet. But one day I am. You know, I got a, I got a half finished documentary that I probably had the last six years. I just had never finished it. Credit is for poor people. I said I. I told my wife, I said, man, I, I promise I'm going to try to get that done, like the, the top of uh, there we go. next year. There you go. Look, look, he got it. There you go. <laughs> and look at the imagery on that. It's just really powerful. But, you know, you just like, yo, you killed it with that, that the reason why the book was named that. Because I'm like, why did he name it? Credit is for, and it was just crazy how it said when the poor don't have anything else to eat, they eat the rich. And that was right, like, but, but 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 that that that, <laughs> that, that artwork. Though, I, I, I had to, yeah, that artwork. I had to go through a lot. That was a piece of artwork that I had to go through a lot to be able to use. Uh, yeah. That 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 just went with what I was trying to do, and I just had the graphic designer like, you know, do do what he did. Like all of, all of the books, I I try to come up with a I did my like as far as the imagery on the front of them, like yeah. you know, I come up with something to try to go along with what's inside the book but um uh, yeah yeah like you asked Thank me you. about why last on that y'all just to follow up what he's saying about your name i had diamond when i was 21 right and i had a good job you know <laughs> but what he's saying with credit that's how i started to do real estate investing you know i just leveraged my name uh, you know i didn't personally have anything you know as an asset but making fifty thousand dollars a year and getting a multi-family 
got me to start gaining wealth and then the next house at 25. But I leveraged my name to control assets. So I think that's what he's saying, especially a lot with the student loan crisis. You know, a lot of people are being taught to go and get a job. And if you're already starting at zero and you're getting a hundred thousand in student loan debt, does that make sense? And you talked about that in one of your book, Mr. Smith. I ain't going, I ain't going to um, go there, but you was talking about like, but well, I'll leave that one alone. I'll leave that. I'll leave that one alone. But he, you, 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 you made like a move, but thinking about that, you know, but you had a different spin of a person you knew that could have did something different instead of with the student loan, because it's an easy loan to get, but it's an easy loan to get you guys to get you in slavery. You know, like the United States eat off of you. That's the new slavery really is that student loan debt. And you can go from what they're getting you a hundred thousand and leverage your credit to get you an asset. So I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll. I want to say answer. Cause I know, I know uncle Mike, I feel like uncle Mike got something to say, but um, yeah, I, I wanted to answer this question here. So I have a friend that's 20 K in, in credit card debt, but that's not working right now. Any advice to them to deal with that type of debt? So what, what, what advice do all of you have to deal with, that student loan debt to deal with debt in general. Cash flow. Find something. You know, he just brought up Dave Ramsey. And Dave Ramsey will tell you, I mean, I don't attest to everything Dave said, but he was like he said, just find something to do, deliver, deliver pizzas. You know, I don't know why people, when they have debt, they want to hear something different. How about learn like making money to pay it off? You know what I'm it's saying? Amazing. Maybe a cash flowing somewhere else. And this is where I, I talked about that car being repo. It's so many people like, well, why don't you put that car on the block? Like that don't even dawn on people. If you want to be I walking feel like away, it's privileged to just say, because it's kind of like a pull yourself up by the bootstraps. No, it's not. It's to, it's to make money. You got in that situation because you didn't have enough cash flow or it's some kind of decisions that you're making. And Diamond, you already know it's a lot of stuff you present every day you could do online. Let's knock it off. See, when I, uh, Mr. I, Smith, no, no, I, I'm going because we not, we can't, I, I don't bag rub. When Mr. Smith and I encountered his books, Mike could tell you I was at four working two jobs, two eight hour jobs. If I had what y'all have right now, at two eight hour jobs, and Diamond, you know, two kids as a single mama, and I had to figure it out and work physically. Y'all don't even have to do that. You got Uber where you can work when you want. I mean, you know, I had to be at work on time, sit there. We didn't have the gig economy. So I, what, what I'm telling you, you got things where you can do laundry in your own house to make money. So what I'm just trying to open your mind is maybe use some of the things you have. If you got a car, maybe right now you might have to do Uber Eats in your spare time to start paying that off, put that credit card away. So what I would do, either cut it up. If you don't put it to the side, you'll be surprised. And I talk about this in my book. You'll be surprised what I did. Get some, say you get paid once a week, twice, you know, twice a month. Like Mr. Smith said, a lot of people will spend $40. Like he teaching his grandchildren. You'll spend that on Popeye's. How about throwing that on that credit card? You know, but when you get paid, throw that on that credit card on every pay period. You'll be you'll be surprised before, boom, throw that on that credit card, then pay the minimum, you know, down and find different ways to just make some cash flow to pay on that debt. You know, to start at least starting to tackle that debt. So that's why I'm saying. If this was before 2010 and you ain't had a gig economy, a lot of stuff you can do at home. You could use your car for a delivery. You can, where was that? Go share. And if you, don't, if you don't have a car, there are still, I, I'm playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you trying to tell us to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, right? And that's racist. Yeah, I am though. Et cetera. Right. <laughs> No, I'm like, just saying like, it is what it is. Life is hard. Like, 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 was just saying that yo, you, if if you don't have a car, partner with somebody. 
If you don't have something, partner up with somebody. Somebody got it in your circle. Partner up with somebody. Figure something out. Let's 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 share something. So hey, you you I'm gonna drop you off at work. Let me do. Let me use your car for Uber. Let me use your car for DoorDash. Then you drop me off at work and you do what you do. So you got to be something you could do. I met a girl at McDonald's. I asked her, I said, you look so business minded. She said, I got a business. She sell dinners out of her house. Come on now. Y'all, a lot of y'all let people come and eat at your house for free and eat up your food. I know people in the hood that do a fish fry every Friday and take their EBT <laughs> and, and flip it. We from Newark. Come on, let's stop playing. The church been making money off of dinners. Okay, maybe y'all can make some dinners out of your house. You know, like we not that far. We black people. We, I mean, African Americans. We knew like people that if, if you're cooking anyway, have these people that that come in to eat off of you. Do it. Having to, to buy a plate. So it's different things. Like even cooking cakes. It was fundraisers we did off of cakes, yo. Y'all, um, Diamond, where was the the girl? That was going to barbershops. I, I remember this girl raising money in North for her prom. She put candy in bags, going to the barbershops, selling cupcakes at the barbershops, and the dudes was buying it. Do you know how much it is to uh, make little uh, cupcakes? You know what I'm And it's an easy thing to move. So what we're saying is, well, what I'm saying, nobody else, I, I'll let this be on me. Think outside the box. Use your skill set. Sell. I see dudes in Newark used to get it from me all the time selling waters on the street corner. You know what I'm saying? If I ain't have to get out of my whip, y'all getting that $152 all day. So just think of other ways to make your money work for you. I don't know. That's me. Mm. Hey. I, I think that, you know what I think? I think that people have to get to a point where they're not it's almost like some people are ashamed to do certain things. Like, like, look, I, I'm not boasting, but I could be chilling at the crib, right? And I'm never going to retire. I never get to a point where I'll, I'll submit myself to anybody for information. Like, I'll submit myself to you if I think, oh, she got some information that I need. So, hey, teach me. Well, if it's something I want to do, like this truck, I want to learn about this business because I'm going to turn it into a, I'm, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. too, and, and and for real, like, <laughs> I could be chilling, like, you know, but mm -hmm. man, I'm probably never going to retire. Like, I'm I'm always going to be into something until, until the casket drop. But I think, like, you asked me about people taking pride in their poverty, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's been with me a long time because I had a cousin. He he got murdered, right? Mm -hmm. when, I, when we were young. And, the you know, it was going around the neighborhood. Like, the guy who did it, it's like, like, like they happy about it. Like, yo, we from, we from um, Riverside, you know, South Memphis, right? So I'm like, man, these these niggas, they like they really take pride in where they come mm. from. And there's poverty. Like, why are you happy about like why are you happy about that? Why are you taking pride in your poverty? That's where I got there from. Like, I ain't taking pride in this. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to do better than this, you know, and I'm gonna do whatever I can to get out of this situation. And 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 I think that people have to turn it around like. You don't have to take pride in your party from their standpoint, but you have to take pride in yourself to be like, I'm willing to work at McDonald's. I'm willing to I'm I'm I'm, I'm willing to, to do fish fries. I'm willing to sell candy because I know what I know what the end looks like. I know mm -hmm. I know what the end looks like. You know, I don't know if this is the last thing I'm gonna have to do, but I know this this part of what I need to do. Like and that's that's the that's the main thing that you have to remember, like got to be able to see it at the end not, not to sound like because you hear people that be trying to motivate tell you that but you really have to you really have to see the end no matter what like like dream about that like see yourself really i've always saw myself even when, before we me and my wife go buy a house i walk in that house i already know like 
I could picture the, how the furniture going to be set up. I could picture how my kids playing or whatever. Like, like this is this there's been me like from the stuff that my dad did like and it stuck with me. So, but you know, people just have to take pride from from that standpoint that like, you know, I'm willing to, to submit myself for information if I need mm. to, and I, and I'm and I'm real I'm willing to work to to um, work wherever I need to work work at to help me get to where I'm trying to get. So, you know, that's that's my take on. It. And I do, and it's 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 just like how you saying people take pride in certain things instead of digging themselves out of a situation. And what I find a lot of people are talented, but they're they don't see the value in what they provide, like with the cooking dinners. You could be cooking for your friends for free and never thought, like, hey, well, y'all, you know, are making cakes. Remember the lady in Jersey sold her house saved our house from foreclosure because she made cakes, you know, like put those skills to work. I mean, you remember for your prom, it was a young lady. She, she did y'all makeup. We, she charged and we was like, oh. yes, yes, her prom. and she had to go to prom herself. Self. Yeah. And she was making a, uh, you know, a hustle around, you know, wedding mm -hmm. season. Well, young lady, your yeah. wedding season. Prom season. All right, so 18 at the time. 18. And, and, and doing makeup as a business. So why would you do, like the young ladies, I love it, that do people lashes. Like Charlotte, do his wife, took her talent of braiding hair. She was doing it out of her house and turned it to a business. Uh, so like I was telling you, the, uh, yeah. the woman I just went to, I did a cooking class and she usually do groups. Yeah. Uh, I was the only one. She was like, you must be from the East Coast because only East Coast people do things like women do things by themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, but, but she do a whole cooking class by herself outside of her house. And it's like, and she lives in like a mobile home too. And it's beautiful. I don't want to say, you know, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful place. But she purchased them little thirty-two dollar things from uh, uh, Amazon, and they're like portable stoves. And everybody get a little portable stove when she show you how to cook a certain meal. Like so, we did a steak dinner. But she was like, "This is what I want to do. This is this is my passion. I want to teach people." And she, I was like, "Well, what do you think about a food truck?" And she's like, "I don't want to do food trucks. Mm -hmm. I want to teach people how to cook." And that's what she does. And I, and she was like, she want to do that full time. But I'm like. If you put that on social media, you tell people that you're there, you could do that full time. And she was like, you know, Valentine's Day, she had whole groups of people. They come, they did a whole little game show and all this other stuff like that to do like a cooking contest. But it's like whatever you want to do, whatever God put in you, you're able to do that full time. And I and I believe that. And somebody put a comment. A lot of people don't believe in themselves. And a lot of people don't know, like you said, the value to what they give to other people. And what I encourage y'all, if y'all are doing things for your friends or, you know, whatever, you have a talent, you know, even like Charlotte with braid, you know, braid hair. She was just talented in that. Go and look at the prices on the marketplace. Even if you don't want to charge them you know, top dollar, look with, with the service that you're providing, what is reasonable. Because I think even Sarah Lee, she was working at what they said at a diner and she just made a real good pie. But can I, can I say something on top of that? It's like uh, what you think that you're doing for other people isn't actually it. Like say with Charlotte, Charlotte thinks that she's just braiding the hair, but she's really good at just connecting with people and counseling people. And so she might think that her purpose is braiding, but it's not braiding, it's counseling and, and it's connection and it's bringing people together. And I think that that's what, um, what's in people. It's like, you think that you're good at a skill, but it's really the thing around the skill and it's really mm -hmm. bringing people together. And so with Corey, it's like, Okay, maybe he felt like I'm good at uh, making books, but it's more than that. Like you're yep. living a life for people, especially in the United States. Because if I'm not wrong, uh, other systems outside the United States don't actually use a real credit system. But in the United States, that's a bit like your whole life is on stake for the. If you get a house, it's on a credit system. If you're able to get a car, it's on a credit system. The things that you're able to obtain, and so it's not just like a credit system, but it's like 
How do you deal with the finances of your life? How do you deal with those things? You know what I mean? And so it's much bigger than what people usually think it is. So even like how we talk about Charlotte, Charlotte is much bigger than just braiding hair, but it's connecting people. It's, it's bringing people together. It's counseling people. And, and on top of one thing I always told Charlotte, her professionalism. Yeah. Even when she was working at home, starting off, yeah. she's always timely. She's yep. always like she not frying chicken and, <laughs> and putting you. We all we, she was always but even when the kids is there, she's professional. She was always yes. professional. Yes. And some some of this stuff that y'all doing for other people, if you learn how to be perfect, professional when she transitioned into a shop, it was already the professionalism was there. You know what I'm saying? So like the person said, a lot of people don't believe in themselves. Believe in yourself and value what you're doing. Take an examination because a lot of us do stuff for people for free. I'll be honest with the credit, how I started, Michelle was telling me, Michelle Peters, she was like, I would tell them stuff about credit because me and Mike would have these conversations. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Corey P. Smith, we would just read them books, his, his books for our own self-development. I wasn't out here. And, and I'm just being yeah. real, Mr. Smith, it was self-development. <laughs> And so what, even what Mr. Smith did, he invested in himself. That's how he was able to bring this stuff to you. Invest in his books and, you know, buy his Do yourself books. a favor. Invest in yourself. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> You're worth it. You're worth <laughs> it. Buy all of his books tonight. I'm just, I'm telling y'all, buy this man books. And, and, and I'm telling you, because that's where I launched out here. And I had gathered not only his book, you know, Mike, you bought me a yeah, lot and, of stuff. And it's not all about credit. It's about mindset, too. It's, you it's you, you, you get a different mindset as well. So believe me, do yourself a favor. I, 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 you know, believe me, your, your family, your family going to love it. You're going to you deserve it. You're going to be you're going to be more of an asset to your family. And then some of the stuff and I, I'll, I'll, I won't be the dead horse because some people got offended. Sir, with the Trump thing that you said, they can't <laughs> grasp it. Be no, no, I'm saying they can't grasp it because they haven't changed their mindset. So it's like that coldest winter ever. I would have tried to tell you, but you went and listen anyway. Some of y'all are so entangled in certain things. If we even tried to tell you, we can't even have that conversation with you tonight. Because you haven't, you, you're really just not at that state of mind. And if that's one thing about Robert, I told y'all, watch what offends you. Because somebody said, I'm about to click off. Well, go ahead and stay with that bad credit, boo, and stay broke. This is why you broke today. Because a lot of y'all too offended. And anytime somebody brings something to you that don't uh, align with your broke behind uh, uh, mechanism and ways of doing it, you sign off, and that's why you're in the same position. I'm sorry, I just got say a, a lot of people I have to go that, that, that way. That's that's how you attend, and I have to I have to give all thanks, and I have to say, and I tell my mother this all the time. I say that her work ethic is different, like she just has a different yeah. ethic, and it's like the consistency to be here every single Saturday is crazy, and it's only because of her. Because if y'all, if it was up to me, y'all wouldn't see me. That's period. And uh, and that's just the truth. It's, like, it's the truth. And I say, like, my mother's work ethic, Sherry's work ethic is different. Like, she's just different in this thing. But genuinely, it's because that she has a heart for it. And yeah. she wants to see not only just Black people, but people in general do better. She and, she win. Uh, yeah, it's true. And it's true. And it's like, and she'll be like, I'm about to switch the whole game up and I'm about yeah. to talk about finances. And I'm like, mom, yeah. you were talking about finances the whole time. Like, it, like your whole message, it wasn't just credit. It was generational wealth. And that's really her thing. It's like, I want to say, I want to say publicly, my mother is the backbone of this family and she just, she holds it down. Like, that's just yeah. what it is. And she want to show y'all how to be the backbone of your family. And I see that right. that's passion in it. And she think that that's through credit, but it's through everything. And so she'll be like, I'm about to switch over. I'm about to be talking about finances. I'm like, you was talking about finances this whole time. It yeah. wasn't just that. It was, it was everything she's talking about. How do you be the backbone of your entire family? Because that's what she is, genuinely, genuinely. And she know, I say, in this concrete, I said, Ma, you just got to work ethic. She's like, nah, it's just, I said, nah, listen, 
I'm not and you I, know what it is? I've been it. broke. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, no, no. It's not, even, it's not even, it's not about being broke. It's, it's just not being broke. <laughs> it's about being broke. Bro. No, it's not. It's not. It's certain people in this world <laughs> have a different work ethic than other people. That's you no, know, you know what it's why I say that it's about being broke because I had been good and broke. Right. No, no, I'm just listen. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to let Mr. Smith go. But yeah. I've been broke. <laughs> and so what I'm just saying, when you've been broke and you see an opportunity and you know this is an opportunity you want. I, I hate that I miss some opportunities and I hate to see other people miss opportunities when you can change your situation. And I know don't charge what I say to everybody else because Mike know that. He always told me, not on your watch, huh? Nope, <laughs> not on my watch. That's my thing. He like, you don't know how to shut up or you don't know. How to... That was the not on your watch, huh, Sherry? Not on my watch. No, I get up early for this. And the thing is, because I'm passionate. I'm like, like Diamond said, nobody ain't saying with whoever met me, Sherry, I, either you want to hate me or you gonna like me? That's just it. Mm -hmm. I don't have nobody to take me in between, and I prefer it like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not wishy washy. And what I'm just telling y'all, I want y'all to win. Listening to this, what these people are saying, and I'm saying this man that's successful, maybe change your mindset. Don't let offense rob you. That's all I'm just telling. And I've been saying this, this whole thing. Some of y'all are way too offended. You got to learn how to sit under something. You ain't got to agree with everything. But what I'm just saying, be, you know, just be able to listen to something. And just like, uh, like I said, I don't take everything Dave Ramsey say and make it up. But I could take parts of what he said. And, uh, you know, Mike, like just take parts of it. And then some things are good and some things aren't. So that's that's all. Right, I guess it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> that's, I just want to say that's the that's the look. I'll try not to be in those signs because we Christian people over here, but that's the Aries in her, and it's just about that's it's just hard working. That's just that's what it is. I don't know what to say. Like I say all the time, I have not even a quarter of my mother's work ethic. It is it is. <laughs> it's just what it is. So, but yeah, I thank y'all so much. And I'm going to um, leave the links to everybody's social medias. As we always say that every single live is available. It's like right after this live ends because a lot of y'all ask, like, how can I catch this? So it will be uh, a replay after the live ends. And we do try our best to make sure that all of the links and everybody that you see here, uh, there's Sherry Beckley, there's Corey Smith, there's Mike T, there's Diamond Chanel, because I've seen some people asking, like, I don't know who's who. Well, you're going to know after this live. So we're going to put the links in the description and y'all will be able to connect with who you want to connect with. And that's all I have to say. And thank you so much, Mr. Smith. Um, uh, well, let me go to Mike. Mike, you got last word, and I want to give the guest the final word. No, like I said, I'm just, I'm just like I said, happy to just, 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 just to be on here and just, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it just a lot. So, and Mr. Smith, you. we got to tell you, my mama watching, and she like, Corey we gonna be? <laughs> yeah, my mama, yeah, my mama been reading your book. When I told her, I said, Ma, guess who we gonna have on? And she like, who? I said, Corey P. Smith. She like, Corey? Yo, my, even my mom been <laughs> my mom, my mama thinks she been reading your books for years too, you know? So I just, I just want to let you know, uh, if you ain't, you know, if nobody else you ain't help out, you helped us out. Yes. You know? right, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate y'all having me on. I, I'll just say this. I know you put the link, but like I said, I do a class my, every month or every other month, like if you want the link to it, you can you can email me at Corey Smith one seven nine three at gmail dot com and, and I'll send the link. Um, I, you know, I feel like I share some things when I do when I do the uh, the events, and sometimes I have some of my friends on, but this time it's it's gonna be me. I'm I'm probably gonna talk about. You know, like the little car play, you know, like how 
how I did. It's probably gonna get blown up, but you know, and um, just some of the some of the stuff that I that I that I uh, that I've done. I you know, like somebody asked me, man, how do you make money? They just flat out asked me that. <laughs> so I'll tell you uh some of the stuff that I that I that I do or have done. You know, and I'm dropping it right now his event link. I'm sorry if we did not, uh, and we're gonna pin it. So if y'all want to join his his uh, if you want to join his event, uh, and I'll be I, I'm gonna support myself. So I'm gonna jo join myself because I can always use knowledge, but I will not be the you know the game is sold and not told. So y'all support <laughs> Mr. Smith and support his event you guys so i'm dropping yeah, and there's so much more we want to talk about like and we would love to have you back on and talk about those uh different oh, things yeah. I feel like we didn't hit on everything and so there's yeah. so much more we want to hit on yeah i think i one 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 i, I sent her one book but one book i think everybody's gonna be happy when i put out and yeah. it's the secret to building shelf corpse because mm. mm, don't nobody know how mm. but I'm gonna tell them how to build it. You know, it's better to build it yourself than to spend cash on one. That's but awesome. anyway. And yeah, would you just, come back when the book drop, or do you want to? Yeah, oh, come back. Wanna, come come back. back. Oh, yeah. yeah, come back. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No. it's an open yeah. door policy for you. We're here yeah. every, like I said, Saturday. So you got got my uh my contact information. We got each other. You're more than welcome to come up and join the panel you really would be a blessing whenever you're free if you want to okay. you know come up so you're you're more than welcome right I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you up um too about what we talked about beforehand and and um like i said i'll be in texas like around the 28th don't don't April. don't drop our location though <laughs> nah nah I'm, I'm not gonna do this <laughs> Yo, I'll be I'm talking not... too much crap online. Nobody roll up on us. We'll yeah. take care of you too. We'll take the constitutional carry down here. Wow, 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 wow. We'll take somebody. Roll up on us. I you know what I'm dealing with. Find my, out. My, okay. Yeah, my, my my wife's an Aries too. So Y'all the same sign. Hello, so she, man. She she, she get to it. He is there pity me of oh, Aries. When y'all greet us in Texas, just oh. make sure you wave. Don't I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, I appreciate. Good, but no, I'm not. <laughs> don't, but don't all, all the links is going to be in the description as soon as this live, man. Because a lot of people watch this live once it ends. So you're going to have Corey's, you're going to have Sherry's, you're going to have Mice, you're going to have Diamonds. Uh, all all of our links is going to be in the description and in the comment section. So I thank y'all so much for joining. And and sign up for Mr. Smith Eventbrite. We're yes. going to drop that too. So we're going to make sure if y'all want to join and take part of his information, you make sure because he's a beast. So for sure. All right. All right. Y'all uh, take it easy. I'm out. All right. Night. Enjoy your Peace night. Soon. Thank right. you, everyone. Enjoy your night. See y'all next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.